What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 3 of NHL 24 Salt Lake City Dragons Expansion Mode Series. As always, thank you guys so much for the support in the last episode. If you leave a thumbs up on this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. We're currently 5-2 and two through the preseason. Miko Rantanen, we just signed this summer, he's averaging over 2 points a game in the preseason. That is incredible. Uh, if you guys did miss the last episode, I'll show you the Stanley Cup winner. Unfortunately, it was not us. It was actually the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, we did make the playoffs again, so this team, kind of like the Vegas Golden Knights, was much better than I expected to start. Like, we traded away a lot of guys. I was kind of ready to rebuild, but uh, the team, you know, proved me wrong, see my expectations. So, and now we're just trying to win a Stanley Cup. As you guys can see there, that first line, you got Alexi Lafreniere up to an 87 overall, playing with Sam Reinhardt there and Miko Ranton, who's a 96. We had to sign him. Uh, nice because overall literally is a top 10 player in the game and 12 million dollars is kind of a steal for him second line you got march so dreber hall dreber here's a winger but i showed you guys last episode he's got 77 face off so we'll try that i like this line combo because this way our top six forwards are just in the top six you got krebs on the third line stan coben now in the nhl and arvidson i saw someone point out he actually scores one second left in the playoff game against the flame to keep our hopes alive unfortunately he lost the series but uh he's a hero for that so Definitely going to try and keep him on the team for a bit. Noel Gunler's now back in the NHL. 84 overall sniper, but actually has 5-star physical. He's fast. Got 91 stick check. We'll see how he does play on the fourth line with Lowry there and Ridley Gregg. Also, I saw some of you point out Ridley Gregg here lost his off-the-rush X-Factor just because he's not high enough rated, I guess, to keep it. I could put it back on, but maybe he'll earn it back. Uh, defensively here, we still have Gerard Jersey as our top pair. They get a minus one cam, but like they did well like, the last couple seasons, so I'm fine. Barry Harley, Harley now in 83. Comey signed for a 1.375 offer sheet, which I still can't believe. And then Culp there. Hasn't grown a ton. I've told you guys before, defensive defense, and they're tough to get going. Simply because they don't put up the stats to like grow that way in the sense. So you just have to rely on their natural progression, which so far it's been pretty slow for him. Goaltending wise, we're stacked. Spencer Knight starting. Wolf backing him up, 86, 85, respectively. You look at power play one, I think we're very good. If you guys forget, Tyson Berry, 98 passing, 94 offense awareness. All I need him to do is be the quarterback of this power play. Power play two there, minus two cam, but like it looks solid. I think the four mans both look good too. In terms of the PK, we're not getting great chemistry, but I noticed Mika Ranton, 95 D awareness, 92 stick check. Like, he's actually solid defensively in game. In real life, he's nowhere near that good defensively, but that's okay. In game, we're rocking him on the power play on the PK, trying to get, you know, our money's worth, I guess. Now, in terms of the AHL team, still looking for a Calder Cup. I think this team's kind of stacked. You got Harvey Bernard now in 80, playing McGroarty, who's also in 80. Samoski, which in 82, just really no room for him in the NHL team. Zadina's there. I mean, we got a lot of guys coming up, like Dower Nielsen. Glenn Denning's a great fourth line signer for the AHL team. Merkley puts up points. Love Chanel probably make the NHL next season. I think most of these guys, you know, mid to high 70s. Gold Tiny, you got an 84 Dostal. Definitely gonna have to trade one of our goalies. Like, it kind of seems dumb to have them. Even, like, you know, if we could keep them, I feel like realistically, at least one of them needs to move on to an HL team, have a chance of being a starter. Now, last episode, I asked you guys who we should name the captain, and I got a variety of responses, but I think the number one response I saw was give it to the guy in the thumbnail, and that's Taylor Hall. I don't mind this at all. I'm a big Taylor Hall fan playing for the Spits, so uh, he's now wearing the C for this team. How long he'll, you know, be on the team for, I'm not sure, but we'll give him the C, and We'll see if he can actually lead this team to a Stanley Cup. I also decided to give Ranton an A because, you know, he's a big frame to sign. I kind of look at it like Tavares with the Leafs. March still there wearing the other way. I think he was like, you know, the second most popular vote to be captain. I also saw a lot of people saying maybe Lafka wear the C. I think he probably will be the future captain of this team once, you know, Hall, Ranton, and March are retired or at least, you know, no longer those top players. So before we get started here, guys, with the Sim, I'll share the ratings. Uh, Avalanche, they're actually 6 and 1. Kind of you know, starting to be a rival as we face them twice now in the playoffs. So, as you guys can see here, we've got 100 offense, 92 defense, 88 goal tending. We also took one of their star players in Ranton. So yeah, definitely see a potential rivalry here. They're pretty close in terms of geography. Let's see what happens in year three. And before I forget too, guys, I want to take a look at contract extension. So luckily, all of our top players are signed for two more years, except for Marteso. Was making nine. He wants 8-8. Eight, eight. So that's still a lot of money. He's 34. I don't necessarily want to let him go, but I'm not sure if I want to pay him that much. Once he's 35, could be dropping down to the third line because we have young players coming up. Sean Dursey wants more money, but it's not crazy. Six million for an E5. If we can get him locked up for say five years, that'd be the rest of this franchise. If he would take five, seven, five, I think that'd honestly be really good. For a guy that's like a low end top pair, high end second pair defenseman. After that, Stan Coben, uh, for his first NHL season, probably makes sense to get him locked up, wants the league min. I never understand them asking for the league, man, when they're about to, you know, break out. Okay, we could get him on one of those like dirt cheap deals. And we have a ton of cap space, so I think that makes the most sense for us. Let's do like, honestly, 275 for five, three C. Even if he doesn't grow beyond 84, that's still a very good contract. Culp here, I'm wondering what he's gonna ask for. Five million. 
I don't want to pay him that. He does not produce. He's solid defensively, but he's also not going up in rating. I think 5 million is kind of crazy. I'd either hold out and try to get him for cheaper, or even if someone gives him an offer sheet, we get like a couple first round picks. I don't think I would mind that. Wolf and Knight here, this can be interesting. Knight wants 6 million, which is honestly only a slight raise, and Wolf I actually can't extend. We could wait on both of them, see who's like the better deal come the end of the season. Same goes for Dostal here, he's 84 medium elite. I can't sign an extension yet. I think maybe it makes the most sense just to wait on all three guys, and whoever's the cheapest will be our starter. The other two, we could you know, potentially trade both of them, but like I said, uh, for sure we trade one. And there we go, guys. Tankoven said yes. I just noticed too, like, what is going on in this picture? It looks like his mouth and chin are just all blurry. I don't understand that, but uh, very happy with the contract. Jersey here also said yes. That's huge. All right, guys. Sunday in December, we got a record here, 24-13-1. and So this team continues to play very well. First place in the division. Our division does look to be a little bit weaker than the others, but still, we're in first place. We take that. AHL team, 20-12-6. Our division there, you can see, quite tough. Someone pointed out to me, actually, last episode, the AHL team was a wildcard team with 101 points, which is kind of crazy. McGordy there, over a point per game. I love that. He's definitely going to be a future NHLer. Mika Branton tearing it up. He's got 53 and 38. So, really, no, no complaints at this point. Hopefully, the team can uh, continue to play well. All right, guys, with the deadline now, with a record of 36, 23, and 5. We have slowed down a little bit. We're currently third place in the Central, 77 points. In terms of a wildcard spot, we're, like, 11 points above the Canucks, who have the last one. So, we should, you know, be pretty solid in a playoff spot. And right there, you guys can see Ranton continues to crush it, 86 and 64, looking like he'll hit at least 50, maybe even 60 goals. AHL team here, McGordy still our leading scorer, and they're still fighting for a playoff spot. That's crazy, 75 points, and they actually might miss just because that AHL division is so tough. We'll get to the deadline here. Clearly, I guess we're full-on buyers at this point. I still don't really want to give away any of our, like, you know, blue chip prospects or anything like that, but um, we are a buyer. Like, we're trying to win Stanley Cup. You have Mackenzie Weger available. I mean, 6.25 for an 89 overall defenseman is actually pretty fair. It does pay at least 38, though, which I think would be the main concern. Swayman did not get a contract. Are you kidding me? I did not realize that. His rights are owned by the Boston Bruins. I don't know how they didn't sign him. They literally trade away Allmark. Stevenson there, Patrick Laine, Brandon Sod, Scott Lawton with the Sharks, Riley with the Preds, Ferraro, Milano, Alex Iafello, who is solid defensively, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to pay $5.5 million for that. Honestly, none of these guys are crazy to me. I'll take a look here and see how our goalies are doing, maybe even how some of our defensemen are doing. I think forward-wise, you know, we're pretty set. So Knight here, let's see. He's got a 904. We can live with that. It's not amazing. Wolf there, below 900. I really expected more from him. Could use him in a trade. Dostal, 898, below 900 in AHL. Is kind of crazy for an 84 overall goalie. Um, all right, interesting results, I guess. Levshinov will get called up. We got Glebov there, who's also going to get called up next year. Actually... Wait a minute. This is insane, guys. Already 81 overall. If you forget, we drafted him at the end of the third round, a 97th overall. I believe he was a 69 out of the draft. So in less than a year, he's gone up by 12 overall. Like, that's nuts. So we got him and Levshinov coming, which means Culp's definitely expendable if he's asking for too much money. But like I was saying, I want to take a look at production. Girard's kind of killing it. 46 points, 64 games. We take that. Jersey's not getting the production I'd like. Six goals, 10 assists. He's got good offensive stats. I'm not really understanding that. 89 offensive awareness. I mean, at least he's a plus 17, so can't complain too much. Tyson Berry's got 36 points, only four goals. So Girard there doing a little bit better. We could move Berry because he's going to be making six and a half million there at 35. We got those young players coming up. We got Schaefer there as well. Like a lot of things to look forward to. So I don't really know if we need to move a defenseman. If anything, we could actually like trade away Barry. I Honestly, I think I'm just looking to make a hockey trade here. I'm not going to lie. I am kind of eyeing Mackenzie Weger here just because... AN overall player, he's got shutdowns X Factor, which is big, five star defense. I mean, he kind of does it all defensively. Contract wise, I think it's very solid. Also, guys, look at Columbus right now. I just wanted to point out Adam Bokus there, only 81 overall. A bunch of you guys said I, you know, missed out on drafting him. On our team, maybe he would have produced more, but like he already had a lot of offensive defensemen in front of him. So just showing you, I don't think it was a huge loss. Also, too, Patrick Liney there is available. I mean, not a terrible player to go after. I just don't know if it's really worth, you know, that value and we already have a very solid top six. Also, guys, I just noticed John Carlson's down to 83 overall, so definitely glad I did not trade for him. So looking through all the teams, I think the only trade I really want to make here is Mackenzie Weger. I think I feel like when you look at our defense, we could use a guy like him. We can play top pair with Gerard, add a bit more defensive stability. Contract is a bit long, but it's still a very good number. I think we do this trade, we definitely trade out Barry. It's pretty much equal money there. Barry's actually making a quarter of a million dollars more. Have to add a ton of value. We could send Dustin Wolf back the other way. Uh, they don't want him. They want Safranov, though. Do we need him? Probably not. We look at the rest of our goalies. So add him to this. 
at that point pretty equal would they say yes to this trade trades rejected i think you know i would add on maybe like a second we don't have a second could do a third Oilers are probably better than the capitals trade still rejected all right we could try adding say second round pick i really don't have to go up a first trade still rejected all right let's do second next year third this year with saffron of immediately goalie and tyson perry this seems like a huge haul for a guy who's on the block and they're still saying no they're saying it's quite far off that's kind of insane to me first round pick and they rejected that wow honestly guys i mentioned how i didn't want to pay call what he was asking for he's medium elite so he's got some value and we got glove up who's now an 81 so you're younger probably gonna be higher rated we'll have him three years entry level we have left Shinov there they're both right side D. Could immediately get an upgrade here. Barry, obviously, maybe will trade like this summer. So Culp on his own isn't quite worth Uyghur, but he is a guy that I think, you know, they might be a bit more interested in than Barry. And maybe rather than Saffron, I'll be throwing Wolf here just because he is a backup. He's going to want paid. Sending him back to Calgary. I'm not sure, you know, what the Flames are going to think about this one. Markstrom they still have, but he's actually a better goalie than him. Vladosh making $2 million there for one year. I guess I'll just take back Lankinen, B, H, I'll start at 80 overall. So Culp and Wolf here for Uyghur and Lankinen. Let's see what they say. Trades rejected. This, <laughs> why is this trade so hard to make happen? Wolf's got more value than Safranov as well. Jeez. Try the third. And there we go. Okay, so I like that trade. I think, again, Culp is going to get paid way too much. We got other better young defensemen. Uyghur is a huge piece on the defense. And like I said, Dossel will be called up to be the backup. Lankin, AHL starter, probably trade him away for like a seventh round pick at the deadline. Honestly, probably the only move we're going to make. I think our biggest need was having an actual number one defenseman, and now we have one. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now complete. As I mentioned, just made that one trade for Uyghur. I think, you know, the biggest thing we needed. Hopefully, it can kind of push this team over the edge. You got Noah Cates there going to the Sabres. Tanner Howe to the Flyers. They get a good prospect back. Um, Owen Pickering to the Flyers, another prospect on the move. Sorelli to the Blackhawks. Interesting. Logan Thompson there to the Flames, so they trade for him. They also get Dustin Wolf, Mario Ferraro there to the Devils, to Foley to the Sharks, Alexiak to the Blackhawks. But I guess they're actually loading up now. Darda starting to enter his prime. Same with that guy they drafted first overall in 2025. Dvorak there to the Canucks, Scott Lawn to the Hurricanes. Let's see, JVR to the Wild, Sonny Milano to the Penguins. So I think probably we had the biggest trade, nothing, you know, too crazy. And Vladosh is actually put on waivers. Wow. I mean, we could kind of snipe them here. 6-5, 9-0-5, percentage. We have the money. I mean, might as well. We claim him. Makes the trade even better for us. I'm kind of curious. So yeah, Lankinen is considered our backup. We got him back in the trade. And then we got Dostal down with Vladar. So I'll call up Dostal. Honestly, Lankinen, i probably just keep as a third string. That way... Uh, Vladosh there starts. Clang still gets some ice time as the backup. All right, guys, so after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the lines. Obviously, forward group is still the same. Defensively, though, we now have Girard and Uyghur on the top pair. I, again, I think adding Uyghur is going to be huge for this team. We then have Dursey, Harley on the second, with a Coleman Barry on the bottom pair. In terms of the power play, I think it's still the same. So Barry's still getting a good amount of minutes. But then we look at the PK. Uyghur's on the top PK unit. He's also on the top three man PK. So hopefully, you kind of solidify that position. If you guys are wondering, too, why I'm you know having Peyton Krebs on the first unit, well, he's got 93D awareness there. Pretty good skating. I feel like he actually might really excel in that spot. AHL-wise, more or less the same. So obviously, in terms of the goaltenders, Vladosh now starting. I should show two NHL-wise. Dossel's now the backup. So hopefully that trade was worth it. And let's see this team go on a deep run. All right, guys. We're on the end of the season here with a record of 45, 29, and 8. So not too bad. 98 points there. One win shy of 100. We got third in the division. Looks like we'll be playing the Wild in the first round of the playoffs. AHL team doesn't make the playoffs with 103 points. And see, they're fourth in their division. I'm not sure if they're a wild card team, because I'm pretty sure in the AHL, it's just the top four teams in each division. But getting fourth with 103 is honestly pretty crazy. Take a look at the leading scores next here. So, McGrordy, almost a point per game. He had 78-82 in terms of the NHL team. Miko Rantan, 106-point season. Let's go. So, definitely was worth the money we paid him. I'm curious. This was an outside shot. He actually won the yard. Ross, Sam Reinhardt there, put up 100 points, playing on his line. Lafreniere, 88. I could see him going up to an 88 overall as well. Reinhardt even couldn't even get a jump in rating. So the two frame signings there carrying this team. Taylor Hollard, 77 on the second line. Pretty impressive there. His first season as the captain. March, so 76. Dreber, 69. He had 40 goals though. That's nice. Uh, Gerard, 57. We take that. Stan Coven, 55. His rookie season. Also impressive. Barry put up almost 50. So overall you really can't complain with anybody aside from like i said jersey i think could produce a little bit more but plus 25 is actually quite solid goaltending night 905 dos there in limited action had a 912 ahl here so vladosh 907 in the games he played i think he'll actually help the hl team in the playoffs mcgordy and samoski actually tied their 78 points but mcgordy had 10 more goals 
So Dina Pitlick, 62, Phillips, 55, Merkley also had 50, Sam Harvey, Bernard, Levshinov at 39. Again, he's probably getting the call up. So overall, I think, you know, both teams impressed. Now look at the entire league. Eric Carlson winning the Art Rush Trophy, 110 points. Are you kidding me? Pittsburgh definitely needs him to pop up like that in real life to try and make these playoffs. The Zegos put up 107. And it's funny, I mean, there's all these trade rooms around here. I feel like whatever team gets Zegos is going to be winning that trade as long as, you know, they don't give up too, too much. Ranch in there, finished third in scoring the entire league. That's impressive. Plus 32. Maybe with that plus minus, can even win the MVP. Hughes there, Gensel. Reinhardt actually plus 39 on that top line of the 100. I mean, yeah, our two guys, maybe one of them could win the heart. That'd be sweet. Kaprizov, Keller, Matthews. Matthews at 57 goals, which actually, wait a minute, tied Ranchin from the Richard I think they just split the award, which is pretty sweet. What a season there for Ranchin. Taking on the Richard Shard trophy with Matthews. Defensive scoring here, of course, is going to be going to Carlson. Should get the Norris. He's only got plus 10 worse than Bouchard there, who had 92. Looking at goaltenders, got John Gibson with 40 wins. So all of a sudden, the Ducks are a team. Save percentage for a starter, Shesterkin with a 9-2. And then goals against here looks to be Devin Levi with a 2 7 8. And finally, guys, looking at rookie skaters. Cole Eisman put up 61 points. Stan Coven was second at 55. If he had a positive plus minus, he actually might have a decent shot to call there, but it's probably just going to go to Cole Eisman at this point. And now looking at the entire league here, guys, the Maple Leafs actually win the President's Trophy, 114 points. We finished seventh there in the entire league. Anybody get screwed? Doesn't really look like it. Carolina, though, kind of squeaks in at 18. And Islanders, last place with the Sharks, both 71. They actually had a good amount of teams there in the 70s. Goals four here. Maple Leafs were first. We were second. I mean, yeah, our team was pretty solid this year. Best goals against the Jets. I don't see us. I also don't see us for the worst goals against. So somewhere in the middle, which is why I think, you know, picking up Uyghur, a very solid defensive player, should help us out. So like I said, guys, in the first round here, we've got the Minnesota Wild. I'm honestly not too sure. We know they still have Kaprizov, but I feel like a lot of that team might have changed at this point. All right, so their first line, they're actually still the same, basically. Kaprizov, Eriksson, and Boldy. They got Hartman there, he's an 86 now. Wenberg they got. Barbanov, Zuccarello, Rossi, Wheeler, Yurov, Hayes, and Goudreau. So a lot of depth. Kaprizov, of course, their star player. Brodine, 90 overall. Brock Faber. Spurgeon, Cormier's an 84. Petrie, Savar. Defense isn't bad. They got 85 wall set and Gustafson. So kind of similar to us. Just a solid tandem without a really elite goalie. So... I think we got to work it up for us in this first round. Definitely um, not going to assume anything here. This wild team is going to be tough. So first two games in the state of hockey. 4-3 win. 6-0 loss. All right. Next two games at home, Salt Lake. 2-1 win. 5-3 loss. So 2-2 two two through the first four games. Game five in Minnesota. Come on. 5-3 loss. Can we force game seven here? We're back home. And we do a huge win. 9-1. I'm just going to send this one period by period. Game seven. In uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Let's go. 2 nothing lead early for them. Erickson at Kaprizov. All right. 4 nothing. Yeah, we at least don't get shut out. The captain puts one on the board. But unfortunately, first round exit. And now look at the AHL team here, guys. We played the Marlies in the first round. Beat them in five. We're now playing the Rochester American. And the series is currently tied one apiece. And unfortunately, they took us out in the second round. So, I mean, both teams made the playoffs. Unfortunately, neither could really make a deep run this year. And the playoffs are now complete, guys. The Edmonton Oilers there win the Stanley Cup. So, McDavid finally a champion. Color Cup champions are the Henderson Silver Knights. So, hopefully that can be us in the not-too-distant future. I feel like the core of this team it definitely has the ability to do it. Montreal jumps from 7-1 to one and getting Gavin McKenna. That is a big pickup for them. Montreal usually sends pretty well in the future years, too. So, they're going to be even better now. Ranton there was really good in the playoffs. He had 10 points there in our first round series. Over a point per game. Definitely cannot put the loss on him. Marchessault, so, Reinhardt also over a point. Hall was close. Lafreniere. So, I mean, what can we really, you know, put it on? <laughs> Maybe Knight. Wow. 8-8 eight, eight save percentage. 3-5, 4 goals against. 8-8's eight, not good. What's his poise? 87. That should not be an issue. I mean, maybe we can't blame him fully. Maybe we just kind of got unlucky there, playing a good Minnesota Wild team. Playoff tree here. Let's take a look. Oilers beat the Canucks in six. Swept the Stars, Avs in six. And then actually beat the Maple Leafs in six. McDavid versus Matthews. That would be a crazy Stanley Cup final. So uh, team awards there. It's just all Oilers and Leafs. Carlson got the Art Ross Trophy. Ranton and Dig at the Heart. Let's go. His first year as a Salt Lake City Dragon. I love it. Um, Carlson, of course, James Norris. Jack Hughes, Lady Bing. Eisenman Calder. Bouchard, Con Smythe, Levi Vesna, Hellebuck, though, got the William Jennings, McNabb, Lamastrin, now at the Rangers, Flyers coach Jack Adams, Bedard got the Selkie, so interesting to see him win that so early in his career. Carlson also got the Ted Lindsay, and then Ranch in there, it shows actually win the Marie Shard. So, yeah, what a season for him, the Hart and the Marie Shard trophy. A lot of people talking about Matthews potentially getting the Hart trophy this year. Uh, we'll see what happens. AHL awards, Paltapov, most points, MVP. 
Beckman, though, most goals. Benack, best rookie. LeMay there, best defenseman. Drieger, best goalie. James, MVP. Mrazov, sportsmanship. Back in the community involvement. And then Drieger, lowest goals again. So, unfortunately, no HL awards. But I do think, you know, our HL team has a lot of good pieces. Like I said, McGrordy probably gets called up this year, I think. Uh, for sure, Levshinov, of course, the guy we drafted who's down 81. He probably gets called up too. So, could be moving on from some older players this season. Brent Burns there, tires of the LA Kings. Jeff Carter, Corey Perry. You can see the top three players. They're all from the 2003 draft class. You got Oshie, Carlson, Pacioretty, Stahl, Felino, Giordano. So, pretty good retirement class. And as you can see here, Luke Lendetti retired. I was curious to see if we had any players. So, just an AHL guy, not a big deal. And goalies here, James Reimer. All right, guys, we just entered the 2026 draft. Of course, like I said, Montreal will be taking Gab McKenna first overall, but maybe there's some more steals for us to have. I still can't believe, you know, who we got last season. Robrecht, their high lead as well, number two. Pay Yarvi, number three. Two and three there, both gems. Let's see. Low elite, 186. Potentially even later than that. That's awesome. Um, Kervinen, potential medium franchise defenseman. And he's going to go fourth or fifth round. If our scouts found a medium franchise in the fourth or fifth round, I don't even know what I would do. This would be the biggest deal ever. Now, I don't think I've ever had a non-guaranteed franchise guy be a franchise. So he's probably medium elite, which is still really good. But I doubt he's a franchise player. That would just be absolutely insane. Uh, let's see if we have any other, you know, steals here to find. I mean, honestly, Austin Ball could be high elite. Central scouting there ranks him at 50. Like, that's still really good value. Mario Carl here, probably medium lead as well. 115. Like, yeah, our scouts did work. All right, guys. So the first try I'm trying to make here is moving up from 26 in the first round to 22 with the Devils. Their picks in the block, Manny Kupari and Lankinen. Kupari, we just have too much NHL depth. He's never going to break through. Also, not particularly good defensively. So, move on from him. Lankinen as well. One year left. Could be like a backup for them if they want. If this trade goes through, basically moving up for free. And the Devils do say yes. Okay, so... Hopefully the guy I was eyeing is still there. I wasn't sure about even keeping this pick. Let's see. Wow, Montoya, 77, medium top four by the Flyers. What a great pick. Um, you got a lot of like mid-70s, medium top sixes. High top sixes even, you know, still 15, 16. That's actually pretty good there by a lot of these teams. Medium elite at 12, Fedorov. Wow, are you kidding me? 78 overall by the Kraken. What a pick. Um, I wish we knew about him at 12 because I would have definitely tried to move up. Medium elite at 9. 8, 7, 6, 5. This draft's kind of stacked. Coleman there, 82. Sam PRV. Robrick here, 79. High Elite. McKenna, 82. Medium Franchise. So, we kind of missed out on the one guy that the Kraken got, but that's okay. I was eyeing Preston here. I don't think he's Medium Elite. I think he's probably Medium Top 6, but late first round. He's also from the Spokane Chiefs, so he played with Berkeley Catton. Of course, we still have on the team. And 74 Medium Top 6. Yeah, I think for a late first round pick, he's a sniper there. Pretty solid shot. I'm happy with that. And now next year, guys, moving on from Tyson Berry, off from the Arizona Coyotes for a second, a fifth, and Dermot. Dermot just there for the roster spot. Berry's going to be 35. He's dropped in rating by one. Again, we got Levshinov coming up. We got the other guy coming up. I think we can afford to move him. Plus, we save six and a half million in cap space, pick up some picks. Let's we'll see what the Coyotes say. They got a ton of cap space. And they say yes. All right. So I think that was a big move for us. And with that pick, I should be able to draft the ball goalie, assuming it doesn't go right before us, which it does look like he did. Bonder, 73 medium elite. Wow. The Kraken are having a draft. 73 overall medium league goalie with the 12th pick in the second round. And in the first round, they got a 78 overall medium elite left winger in Fedorov. Like, that is that is impressive. And now with our pick here, guys, like I was saying, I'm eyeing Ball. Hopefully he has a medium league goalie. And he's a high starter. Okay, 69 overall high starter. I mean, I probably would have liked to get a bit more than that for Barry, but hopefully we can hit on those other picks we got as well. All right, guys, and now next year I'm trying to make a massive deal with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Zach Wierenski's on the block, along with all their players, to be honest. So I'm not the young guys, but you got Goudreau on the block, Provorov, Severson. I think I saw Line was on the block still. So Wierenski, I think him and Uyghur could be an insane top pair for us until, you know, Levshinov and the other guy are ready to be like the new top pair. I think three years is not too bad. 9.5 for 90 overall, I think is also quite fair. Now I'm saying out some contracts here. Arvidsson, third line, making four and a half. We got younger guys, he'll be cheaper. Thomas Harley actually dropped in rating. I had high hopes for him, but dropped back down. Dostal there, they like. Again, we have Spencer Knight, second round pick. Value's pretty equal. Tarasov's just there for the goalie spot because otherwise Columbus would have too many goalies. Let's see what they say to this offer. Trade rejected. Okay, so if we're getting a late first round pick, we're not really getting a great player there. I'd be willing to move a first round pick here to get Wierenski. And they still say no, we're quite far off in value. Honestly, I could also throw in Jackson Lacombe with the first rounder. At this point, they have too many contracts. I think this would be like the most I'm going to offer though. Sean Corrales will just take back the roster spot. So I mean, they're getting, you know, middle six winger, two top six defensemen, if not top four. Dostal in the first for Wierenski. Let's see what they say. 
Trades rejected, yeah. Uh, oh, it is quite close to fair value though. Oh man, how do I make this slightly better? All right guys, so even though they want docile, Saffron out there has slightly more value. So I could offer him instead, huge package here. Oh my gosh, as I was gonna offer that huge pack to Rensky, uh, some of their trade went through, so I'll try and re-offer it. All right guys, here's the massive offer making the Blue Jackets for Zach Rensky. And they say yes, all right. So we now have a legitimate top D pair after not having one to start the year. I think didn't really have to give up an insane amount. And you look here too, like those are the two top pairing guys. Gerard Jersey is a great second pair. And then you got two young guys in Glebov and Levshinov gonna be playing on the bottom pair. Like we are set now at D. Still have Dostal and that is a really good tandem, I think. And then forward wise, absolutely stacked. Reinhardt's now 91. Hall's up to an 89, Lafreniere there 88, Stan Coven 87 on that deal. You got Gunler who can step up, play more minutes. Marcheseau may or may not bring back. Krebs dropped in rating, save with Greg, but they're going to be playing bomb six anyways. I think we're in a really good spot. Berkeley Catton as well, probably makes an NHL team next season. All right, guys, we're now in the third round. I'm honestly just going to make a pick a bit early because, again, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to trade back. The game makes it pretty tough. So I'm thinking Carl here, who could be medium elite, next to go at 115. Let's take a chance. And he's medium top four. He's only 40 overall as well. But in the third round, that's still not a bad pick. Now, their next pick here, guys, will just take the next highest pin, which I think is going to be Kervinen, who could be a medium franchise defenseman. This would be incredible. He is a gem. And he's low elite. Wow, our scouts are way off. I thought guaranteed medium elite minimum potential to be medium franchise. Low elite. Oh my gosh, they got me all excited for nothing. And our next pick here, guys, is going to be Vasanov, who should be a low elite just because, you know, he's the next highest rank. We'll take him. And a low top 4D, but he's 62 overall, which honestly isn't too bad of a rating. And we're now making our second pick in the fifth round here, guys. We will take Bondra, guaranteed a low top 6. He's 50 overall, which again is not terrible. I'm just curious about this one, guys. I doubt the Flyers do it. With their picks on the block, they want our pick. Would they let us move up 5 spots for free? No, okay, I was just gonna say, that would be a so dumb. Let's see if they'll take signing rights to Dermot in exchange. We have to take a player back though. Paling has the least value, so we'll do this. And trade's accepted, okay, so yeah, signing rights to signing rights. We get to move up five spots. But basically, we might have gotten the guy I wanted for the next pick, but it was gonna be close, so I just wanted to play it safe. You guys can see here, I'm Ian Kostitsin, although Popov could be medium elite. The goalies usually are, he's from Ukraine. Or we could take a chance on Kostitsin. You know what? I'm gonna go pop up. I'm gonna call an audible here. And he's a medium fringe. Oh no. Let's see if I made the wrong pick. I'm not gonna like try and trade back in. I decided to switch it up. Okay, Kostit's in there, only a low top six. I don't actually feel that bad now. And finally here guys, we actually the last pick in the sixth round. So I'm gonna take our final pinned player. Phillips here, who could be low elite, he's a gem. So he really should be. Let's take a look. And he is low elite, 50 overall sniper. Not too bad in the sixth round. So. Overall, I think that was a great draft. Not only who we picked, but also the fact we were able to trade for Rensky. All right, guys, so at the resign phase here, as you can see at the bottom, we have just under 20 million in cap space, which I think is pretty good considering the fact we did add a little bit of cap with Zach Rensky's contract. Dreamer's gonna get paid next season. Hall, maybe we'll take a discount at the same time he's actually gone up in ratings, so we might have to pay him more. The Stan Coven contract there is just insane. So glad we got him locked up at the beginning of the season. So looking at it here, March is the only guy we'd have to resign. And he wants four and a half. So he actually is asking for half what he was beginning of the year. At that point, I might keep him just to be loyal. I'm just not sure if there's even a spot though. You know what though, looking at the team, I think we can't afford to keep him. He'll probably just be like a third liner. I'll do a one year deal. See if he'll take like 4 million bucks. We actually are still gonna have a lot of money to spend. Adam Lowry down to 81. We don't really need, I think, honestly, Ridley Gregg could be the 4C. Um, even Peyton Krebs is very good defensively. Uh, could fit that role as well. Zadina is an AHL player. He's only asking for 800k, so yeah, we'll do that. Matthew Phillips here, we dropped in the expansion draft, but he's now 28, was in the AHL. Gotta let him go. Um, all these other guys who are still young, obviously, will qualify or give a contract if they're not asking for too much. And now looking at the defense here, guys. Luckily, our top four is all under contract. Gerard's the next guy to get paid. Glebov, obviously, have him on the bottom pair, so a lot from 950k. Luckily, Levshinov there, already under contract. So I think our defense will be looking really good. In terms of the AHL defense though, Merkley's asking for 1.2 million. He's a UFA, so I can't qualify him. He produces for us, but unfortunately, just gotta let him go. And finally here, guys, look at the goaltenders. So Tarasov and Vladosh, I think, probably letting both of them go, unless for some reason I can't get Knight and Dostal under contract. So Knight here, 5.9 for five. Dostal, 1 million for two, that's a great deal. Yeah, we'll just do the million bucks for two years. He's taking backup money, he still has, actually no, potential has gone down from medium lead to medium starter. Knight looks to be the guy now. Um, five years, let's see if he'll take like 5.5 for five. The triple five or actually quadruple five at that point. 
and I think they probably will, even if they don't, we can get Teresov or Vladosh in free agency at that point. Klang's their AHL starter. Ball, I don't think, can be the backup, because yeah, they'll be going back to junior, so I'll have to sign an AHL backup, but other than that, I think the team's gonna be set. All right, guys, so there we go. Dossel accepted the deal, same with Sedina. Marchessault's coming back. Knight wants more money. Okay, Clark there, Poirier, I think. The rest of this is just AHL players. Try offering Knight 575, a little, you know, quarter million raise, and that has them saying yes. And so now, guys, with everybody under contract, we still have 11 and a half million in cap space, which we could use in free agency, although I don't really know if we have any spots on the team. I'm thinking maybe just leave that money for the deadline to try and make a splash. Also, too, we'll have that money for Dreaver's extension, which is going to be pretty big. Also, too, if Hall asks for a raise. Andrew Wright and Gundler probably asking for raises, so we'll get back 4 million from March so, but. It's gonna be tight. Actually, Krebs and Greg as well need new deals. So yeah, we'll have some money this year. Next year, we might be losing a couple guys. Also, you guys, I found this interesting. Our head coach is now A overall before he was an A minus, so he's gotten better. And he's teaching there's A plus, which I think is big since we have a lot of younger players joining the team. Hopefully that coach influence looks to be almost an A. Hopefully it'll be A plus soon. All right, guys, so it's now time for free agency. I'm curious to see who's out there. Jason Robertson, there's no way. Okay, he's an RFA, 95 overall. Zegers there, 91. You got Engren, who's a 90. Was he in like the 2023? Makeup draft, yeah, he was. Third overall, Rasmus Anderson, 88, wants 8.8. .8. Nick Schmaltz there, Patrick Laine. Again, I don't really know if we have a room for any of these guys. <laughs> we need an AHL backup, and I think that's pretty much it. So, um, you know, luckily, not an insane draft class. We're not missing out on, like, a McDavid and Matthews, anybody like that. Goaltending-wise, Devin Levi's the top goalie, but he is an RFA. Uh, Augustin there is number two behind him, so... We'll take a look at two-way. We'll take a look at potential. Maybe somebody kind of fell. Honestly, Bjarnson, what is Philly thinking? 21-79, medium starter. He is way too good to not get signed. Montreal, Saarinen, not quite as good. A little bit older, a little bit uh, lower rated. I'm going to sign both these guys. I think I'm going to send Bjarnson back to Philly if, you know, he does say yes to us. Just because why would you ever not sign this goalie? I've talked to EA about it, and their excuse was that, you know, sometimes in real life, prospects don't sign with teams but um in the game you don't really have any of those like external circumstances that would affect that nor are they in the game presented so it doesn't make sense to me Rachevsky here 2580 Ooh, he's actually kind of nasty that wrist shot 92 90 i think bare minimum this guy could be an ahl superstar so let's do a three year deal there at 950k and now the other thing i have to do for any of you guys is sign some more ahl defensemen we only actually have three a lot of our kind of good defensive prospects are still in juniors so Bjornfoot never really grew. Low top four. I'll do two years, Andrew K. I mean, that's pretty good, I think. Uh, Johansson there, 2579, same thing. Two years, Andrew K. There's a chance, too, if somehow we make a deal, one of them could get called up uh, to be the sixth defenseman in the NHL. Henry Thun, I think definitely worth trying to get from San Jose. I don't know why they wouldn't match this, but miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You guys know that. And if they do say no, we can sign a guy like Lundmark here. There's definitely a good amount of options. But like I was saying before, in regards to the big name free agents, really none of these guys are making sense to me. I guess I could see if there's like the ultimate bottom six guy. He would have to be, you know, five-star defense, five-star physical. Also would have to be a pretty reasonable cap hit. I guess Scott Lawton, 90 D awareness, four-star physical. He does kind of fit that. Left wing center, 77 faceoffs. What is he looking for? 3.4 million. I'll say Kopitar, actually. He is not one of the veterans I said I wouldn't sign this year. He's got high D awareness, but uh, very, very slow. And the physical is also not the greatest, so probably pass on him, too. And look at this. Michael Asawan here has some elite defensive stats. 80 awareness, 87 shot block, 90 stick check. Unfortunately, he knows it, even as a 79, asking for 2 million. So. I don't really think any of these guys are kind of worth it, aside from maybe Lawton, because he does bring you everything. Honestly, I think we have the guys. I'd rather really probably just keep the 11.5 million in cap space, have that for the deadline, have it as a cushion. All right, so Henry Thorne there decided to go with Barracuda, which I think makes sense. Bjornfoot, though, said yes to us. Same with Johansson. Bjarnson, I'm just going to trade to Philly, like I said. Arachevsky there should be an HL star. All right, guys, so this is why Philly lost Bjarnson. They had the maximum of goalie contracts, but like, look at this. They got Polisov, Talbot, they don't need him. Urson, Bennington, they also do not need. Why are they paying Bennington six million? Maybe they made a trade, they regret it. Then they got a couple AHL players there. I think Bjarnson has more value than any of these guys. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take back Urson as he would be an upgrade at HL goalie. So we'll offer Bjarnson there. I think Klang would be the backup. Saarinen at that point is just the third string. Again, I'm doing them a favor, helping the Philadelphia Flyers out, and they say no. They want me to give up. <laughs> Bjarnson has more value than Urson. Oh my gosh, you try to be a good guy. You know what? We have a ton of cap space this year. 
we could take back Bainton's entire contract. Would they give us like a second round pick to take back his contract? Doesn't really look like that's gonna be the case. They're also getting a good young goalie. Like this is actually a really fair offer, but the game doesn't see it that way, which I think is pretty interesting. At least give us a fourth round pick. Like I'm taking back six million. I'm gonna bury it. Okay, so we get a fourth round pick to take back Bainton's deal. Probably wasn't worth it, but at least if anything, you know, it does help out the HL team. And you know what, guys? I gotta sign my favorite name to say, oh, Yuck. Hopefully I'm doing it right. <laughs> I think after all the times I've gotten him, I gotta be able to get it right now. Lock for a little bit of extra money there. Minnesota was interested too. We still have 6.6 .6 million, which again, at the deadline, if you're retaining on a guy, that's like a $13 million player. So we're gonna be fine. Again, looking at these players here, I don't think it makes sense for us to sign any of them. Uh, don't trade away guys so quickly. Again, trying to make up for the game's mistakes. I hope Yuck says yes. So we're gonna have a solid AHL defense. And then honestly, depending how the growth goes, like this team could be very, very stacked. And a pretty big summer trade here, guys. Vegas gets Jake DeBrusque. Anaheim there gets two seconds. Washington here offering me Dylan Strome in a third for Preston, who I think is the guy we just drafted. And they want two seconds in a third. Yeah, I mean, if they look at our depth chart, we do not need Dylan Strom, especially at that price. All right, guys, so let's start next season. I'll show you what the team is looking like. As I mentioned before, I think we're pretty stacked. We had all that extra cap space, didn't even need it. So first line here, no change. They popped off last year. You got Alexi Lafreniere, Sam Reinhardt, Miko Ranton, again, a plus five. Again, everyone's gone up in rating. Ranton and Captain 96. Also, that was kind of cool. Lafreniere's actually got the Born Leader X Factor now. It's like the game knows. I plan on giving him the C eventually. Also, too, I noticed he has skilled up. Same with Taylor Hall and Drebers. So... Maybe they all scored Michigan goals last season. Um, second line there, you've got Draper, who again, very good player in and overall on his contract year. So maybe playing second line will actually help us get him a bit cheaper. Got Stan Coven in the middle up to an 87. Hall there again, now an 89. Third line, Brickley Catton now an 83. Playing Samoskovich, also 83 in March so. And then fourth line there, you got Gundler, Krebs, and Greg. So luckily our ice time allocation is roll four line. So hopefully everyone gets a decent amount of minutes, especially since these three guys will be on the PKs. So Moscovich playing 3C just has insane hands. 95 offense awareness, pretty good wrist shot, good skater. Hopefully he does well there. In terms of the defense, you got Rensky Weger on the top pair, which I think is crazy. Jersey Girard, very solid second pair. Again, that was our old top pair. So like this just kind of shows you how much better the defense is. And then bomb pair there, you got Glove and Levshinov. They're both melee potential there with roll top six. And again, they're two-way defensemen. Usually two ways grow better than defensive defensemen. So we'll see if that's the case. Gold tiny Knight still starting. Dostal now backing him up. I think this team is pretty stacked. AHL team, we got Binner there as he started, which I think is kind of funny. Again, probably should have got at least a third for him, but whatever. We utilize some of the cap space. Uh, Rachevsky here, I think is going to pop off for us in the AHL. Like, look at those stats. His hand and his shot, both ridiculous. You have McGrody there in the middle, 82 overall. I thought he'd make the NHL team last year. I didn't expect us to have so much depth, but I think next year will definitely make it. Plus, 90D awareness. I would like a higher shot block stick check, even physical, but... Um, he's got the awareness there, so maybe the rest of them will grow. Hooten in here, actually, solid power forward. He'll probably eventually be a bottom six player for us. After that, just a bunch of, you know, solid AHLers, mostly high 70s. Defensively here, I think every single HL defenseman we have is a 79, which has to be one of the better HL decors. So overall, I do expect both teams to make the playoffs. Also, two guys, I'm just kind of curious. I want to take a quick look at the record book so far for this team. Obviously, we're a brand new franchise. So most points there is March or so. It's kind of funny. For this season, they're showing Culp, we trade away. Assists, though, is actually Lafreniere. Games played, they're showing Hall. Penalty minutes is actually Taylor Hall. That's a bit of a surprise. Um, Spencer Knight there has the current goalie records. Goals is also March or so. So I'm thinking, you know, it's March or so right now. By the end of it, it probably will be Lafreniere if he does play for us all eight years. And I'll end the video, guys. I'm just going to show you our ratings for next season. Hopefully, uh, year four will be the year we finally get that Stanley Cup. So we've got 100 offense, 93 defense, 87 goal tending. I think overall we've got a very solid team. Excited to see what happens. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.